Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome to this morning's Srimad Bhavatam class. It's from Canto 2, Chapter 3, and Text 17. We're fortunate this morning to have His Holiness Chandamari Swami to give the class. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai. Hi. My obeisances to all the devotees, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And it's all yours, Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yo Hariti by Pum Sam Udyanastam Chayana so Tasyate Yajino Nitta Uttama Sloka Vartaya. Translation Both by rising and the set and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all good. Personality of Godhead. Report. This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. For the time indicated by the sunrise and sunset will be usefully wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to a living entity so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially a human being, is seeking happiness. Mm -hmm. See, I'm, I got the word for a second here. Wait a minute. One minute. Mm -hmm. Seeking happiness. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can hear clear? Yes, it's actually louder than before. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is my microphone now. Okay. 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 A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity. But he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. A living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole. And his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spirit whole, and his name, form, qualities, pastimes, entourage, and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes in contact with any of the above mentioned energies of the Lord through the popular channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita 2.40, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. Endeavor, endeavor and devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly, in, highly potent drug injected intravenously, acts at once on the whole body. The transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the ear by the pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. Oral re realization of the transcendental message implies total realization, just as fructification of one part of a tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Sugadeva Goswami prepares one, prepares one complete life for eternity. As, as thus, the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life 
inasmuch as he is constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. That's a, listen to that. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the laws of birth, death, old age, and disease. Think about that one. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection is the living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age, and disease. Materialist way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Sri Smriti Srasas as quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Dakur. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank, bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a brahmana. The money is given in charity to a non-brahmana without brahminical qualifications the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity, quit moving the page, will you? <laughs> Keep it in one place. Okay. okay. Because... If it, if it, yeah, don't, don't move the page. All if right, it, fine. Thank if, you. If it is given in charity to a half-educated Brahmin, even the money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified Brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and a thousand times. The money is given to a Veda paraga, paraga, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplication. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead. Sri Krishna has stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaisya Savam Ahameva Vedyo. There is guarantee. There is a guarantee of money being returned if giving in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal light or returning home back to Godhead. Madhama gatvam purna janmana vidyate. Madhama gatvam purna. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life <clears throat> is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Om Ajnan Timiranda Syagana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine. Nirvise Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine. Vanchakopa Tarubischa. Kripa Sindhu Vaebacha. Vatitanam Pavane Bhyo. Vaishnave Bhyo Namaha Namaha. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is a very nice example given by this particular verse how by the sunrise and sunset, there is a there is a diminish of the longevity of life of the living entity. But here it says that for a devotee or one who utilizes his time discussing the the all good personality of Godhead, the, the topics of the all good personality of Godhead, lives eternally. Devotees don't die because they know I am not this material body. Therefore, they live forever. But how can they live forever is by absorbing themselves in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. 
The sun is the, what is called, it's called Kala Chakra. Another name for the sun is called Kala Chakra. And that is the wheel of time. The time is calculated by the movements of the planetary systems, which is centered around the movement of the sun, which brings about daytime and nighttime. So every second we are in existence, we're moving closer to the end of this body. And old age is, a, is an indication that that end is coming very soon. But for a devotee, the devotee knows, I am eternal, I don't die. And therefore, in order to realize my eternal existence and to cash in on it, in other words, to experience it, one has to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And the glories of the Lord are as unlimited as the Lord himself, because the Lord is on the transcendental platform. He is above time. So when we connect with his glories through hearing and chanting, we also transcend the three modes of material nature, which was in the realm of time. And therefore, a devotee lives forever. He doesn't die. Death is due to this material body. And this material body is an infection over the, uh, over the, the eternal soul. We use the word infection because um, just like when you, when the body ends, the soul leaves the body. But what happens to the body? The body just starts to disintegrate. Dust thou art, dust thou beest. So the body goes back into dust, becomes dirt, becomes uh, um, what else? Ashes if you burn it becomes stool if it's eaten by animals. So the, the body is simply a bag of dirt. That's all it is. <laughs> and it goes back to its actual state after the soul leaves the body. What gives life to the body is the presence of the soul, but the body is never alive. The body is always dead. It has no life in and of itself. And the, the scientists mistakenly think or speculate that, you know, a combination of matter produces life, but that is not the fact. Life is spiritual and life is eternal. And so when the soul enters into the body at the time of conception, then the body starts to grow and become what we say. Uh, bigger and animated, and it goes through different phases. But because it has a uh, a time watch on it, after some times it will diminish and eventually disappear. But the soul doesn't. Nahanyate hanyamane sari re for the birth for the soul there is neither birth nor death, nor having once ever ceased to be. It's eternal, unborn, undying, primeval, ever, everlasting. It's not slain when the body is slain. But as long as we don't come to the consciousness of Krishna, we are infected by this, this conception that we die. But we don't die. We have to come to that realization that I don't die. And that, we understand that theoretically. Yes, I don't die. I know that. But still, we go through the different changes of life, and we still have the fear of ending this material body. It's a fear that is characteristic by all living beings who have a material body. But here, this is the consciousness that raises us above that, and that is Krishna consciousness. And hearing and discussing the all good personality of Godhead, just like it says that <clears throat> Prabhupada gives the example in the purport, if a drug intravenously enters into the body, then by the presence of the, the drug, it affects the whole body. Similarly, if one part of the tree is in is in good condition, then it gives nourishment to the rest of the tree. 
especially the root, particularly. So the intravenous or the injection, the medicine, is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. <laughs> and as it enters into the ear holes, it goes into the mind and then into the heart, and then it awakens the soul's existence in its nature as being connected with the Supreme Lord. In other words, we actually experience and to whatever degree we absorb ourselves in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, the uh, presence of the Lord through transcendental sound vibration, which is the connection between the soul and the Supreme Lord, like that. But we have to continue to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Gradually, we, uh, this will bring our consciousness to the perfection of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada describes in discussing this particular purport, he says that one can read 24 hours a day. One sits down and just reads and hears and discusses it with others just by, then one, one will, one when they, their life ends. But we have no attraction for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. If we did, we'd be doing it throughout the day. But we have attraction for this material body and for all of the uh, activities that come by way of the material body, and that's our uh, that's our misfortune. Therefore, we should take spend more time for our eternal benefit to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And then Prabhupada says, "Janmam karma chame divyam." That when one realizes that Krishna's pastimes and his birth in this material world, Janma, is, we celebrate Janmastami as being the birth celebration of the Supreme Lord. But the Lord is, he is also known as the unborn. He never takes birth. He appears to take birth just for the sake of performing his pastimes in this material world and to give pleasure to his devotees. But that birth is, is just an idea of his appearance and his so-called death is also the idea of his disappearance. He never is born. He never dies he moves himself in different ways throughout existence. And if he want, he can appear anywhere and anywhere at any time. But when the devotees chant sincerely his glories, then he appears within their heart to awaken that bhakti that is in the heart simply by our connection with Krishna through this process of shravanam, kirtanam. <laughs> now this verse is... A fundamental verse, it's a very important verse. It gets right to the point. This is spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami. Yes, everyone is afraid of the time element because the time element will take away one's duration of life. Just like the, the foolish materialists, they want to live forever in this material body. And they come up with all these ideas how to preserve the material body for eternity. But it's not possible. They got this thing called chirogenics. I don't know if you're aware of it, but it's, it's some kind of deep freeze where when the body dies, they put the body into the deep freeze immediately so it doesn't decay or decompose. And then you pay you know, ten or twenty thousand dollars to have your body frozen after you die. And then when they discover the secret of life, that's what that's how they say, we will discover it. We are scientists, we know everything. Then we'll inject that into your body and then you'll be back and you'll be able to live again. But this is this is some kind of science fiction. <laughs> that's no no basis in reality. There was one particular very important personality in the material world. His name was Walt Disney. He had, he's the one that created Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and 
these cartoons that became so popular all over the world. They even have this, these, uh, what they say, Disneyland is a big places in California and in Florida where you can spend the whole day walking around in these different cartoon type of uh, uh, expressions. So he he became a multimillionaire, and that was back more than 50, 50 years ago, 50, 60 years ago. And then he heard about this chirogenics, so he decided to pay money that then when he was when they would discover the secret of life, they could bring him back to life. But then what happened was his relatives who were heirs to his fortune complained that, you know, he's dead, we should get the fortune. <laughs> and then there was a big law case saying that he's dead. Others were saying, no, he's paying money, he'll be back, we can't touch his fortune. <laughs> And then one time in the middle of the night, someone snuck into the room where his body was in the deep freeze and they pulled the plug on the deep freeze. <laughs> and there goes uh, all of the so-called fantasies of Walt Disney, which is what he usually created fantasy world anyway. <clears throat> so, you know, people will try anything. If you want to live eternally, all you have to do is come back to who you really are. <laughs> we do live eternally because we are part and parcel of the supreme eternal, Krishna. And because he is eternal, we are eternal also, but not in this body. And so here's the way to experience and to realize our eternality and to achieve the perfection of life is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Krishna, Smartam, to hear and chant and remember the glories of the Lord. We should take this up with great seriousness and not think it's just something on the sideline. If I have a little time, I'll do something. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord brings happiness to the heart, brings pleasure to the mind, and awakens one's uh, uh, relationship with the Supreme. And as this verse says, it conquers over death. So devotees have the formula for conquering over death because death is simply a feature of the body and devotees transcend the body and live eternally. So when the body dies for a devotee, he simply moves from one place to another and of course, when he engages in devotional service, he moves back into the spiritual world. Or at least into a better body to continue with hearing and chanting and serving the Lord in, in some uh, more favorable situation. So there's no loss. But time is there. And if we waste time uh, and don't take advantage of this then uh, we will it's like it's like if you have a million dollars but you can't find it it's somewhere in your house but you don't know where it is and you're looking all over and you've been searching for a long time and you still can't find it so because it's there you have it but because you can't use it you don't have it so this process of hearing and chanting is available. And if we don't use it, it's like having a great fortune and not being able to take advantage of it. <laughs> so take time here and chant the glories of the Lord. The body should get together, make groups, and just sit together and chant and hear the glories of the Lord, have kirtan, and um, relish each other's association and have Krishna Prashadam. This should go on every day, everywhere in the world. And if we do that, then as the verse gives later, is that then uh, there's no more death and there's no more birth. <laughs> okay, we can stop there and open it up for discussion. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. <clears throat>
for like to really get to the point about and you when you were um reading the purport you had us um hear a particular part of the purport over again he just says think about that death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being mm -hmm. only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the law of birth death old age and disease and you had to stress that and think about that it's a symptom of the infection of the eternal living being what death is we don't die. Yeah. thank you very much very much for and very, very very mercy okay so i'm going to stop sharing and what if you can turn on your cameras this is a question and answer time or realizations you want to share and so on um, this has some Krishna Kata. So if you're interested, please raise your electronic hand or unmute yourself and start speaking. Thank you very much, Maharaj, again. Haribo. And the microphone worked wonderfully. We can hear you very clearly this time. Yeah, right. okay. We're going to stay with that. Jai, jai. So Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. It's all good to share Prabhupada Maharaj. This is Anasuya. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a question and I just joined the last 15 minutes after doing the Aarti, so I apologize for, for, for jumping on late, Maharaj. Maharaj, um, when you were stressing the point of hearing and chanting, my understanding, and Maharaj, please tell me if I'm right or wrong, is the more we hear and chant, that should increase, that naturally should increase our desire to want to um, do, you know, to want to serve more. Right, Maharaj? That is the process. Yes, because hearing and chanting is cheto darpana marginum. It, it purifies the mind and awakens the principle of bhakti. So this hearing and chanting is cutting through the coverings of the material energy. And uh, and when as the coverings of material energy become lessened, our desire to serve and to associate with the Lord becomes stronger and stronger. It's natural. We're trying to we're just coming back to who we are. <laughs> and hearing and chanting is the is the medicine. <laughs> and Marge, what a and and sometimes I, I come across this situation and that's why i'm trying to understand Marge, is what if that is not happening like we are hearing every day we are chanting every day we are like reading every day Re no, you know one hour two hours or have a long but the service is not stepping up like we we're, we're not able to you know do or commit or increase why does that happen Maraj? um well, you mean we're we're hearing, we're chanting, we're doing chanting our rounds, we're reading. It's because we still attach to our our material desires, and they they become more important. Mm -hmm. We we've we've elevated material life over spiritual life, mm -hmm. and therefore we take spiritual life as being important, but our material responsibilities, duties, and uh, activities in this material world seem to be the thing that we need to improve or to continue to uh, try to squeeze out some satisfaction from that, you know. You know, sometimes there's an opportunity. All right, we're having a yatra. People can come join the yatra for a few days and hear and chant, associate with devotees, go to the holy places. But no, I won't. My family says we should go to the beach, and therefore we're going to go to the beach because we'll all be together as a family, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't really know, or we don't understand what is the value of this Krishna conscious movement. We think, you know, we think it's just like another activity in the material world, but it's not. It's getting us out of the material world. It's bringing us back to who we are. We have to give it time. If you don't give it time and put quality in the activities you do, 
hear, hear with attention. Read, read with an, uh, the idea to understand and reflect on what you're hearing and reading. How does it relate to me? What is Krishna doing? What is Krishna like? Like this is something I just recently discovered in reading. I mean, I kind of knew it, but it says that, you know, all of Krishna's amazing qualities become unlimitedly greater when he associates with Srimati Radharani. She brings out his qualities uh, millions of times more than they are actually there, simply by her association. So that really shows us that Krishna is great, but he becomes even greater in the association. He becomes more beautiful, he becomes more happy, he becomes more... Uh, more everything he becomes more fame everything all of his qualities are accentuated and accelerated in the association of his pure loving devotee Srimati radharani so that's i thought that was quite interesting and it's just you, you get an indication of what a little bit about what krishna is like <laughs> and he also come when we bring perform devotional service he also experiences happiness by our effort to serve him like that. Not on the same level as Radharani, but still, we're giving Krishna pleasure by serving him for his pleasure. Mm -hmm. We want to give Krishna pleasure. That's the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you very much for the explanation. This is really, 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 really hits home. And also, if I can piggyback on the question that MC asked. So my understanding from how you're explaining is that when we increase the quality of the, the uh, chanting and the quality of the hearing, then the service becomes more of a higher quality also and we begin to like the service better. When you put your heart into it, when you put your attention into it with effort, then you're actually going deeper into that mood of bhakti. Mm -hmm. If you read just to skim the surface, but if you read to think, to reflect, to offer prayers as you're reading, all of these means you're actually moving into the quality of bhakti that encompasses and absorbs the living entity in relationship to Krishna. So yeah, quality simply means more and more attention, focus, eagerness, that's all. Not that we just get it done so we can do the next thing. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much, man. Did worries if anyone anyone that wants to um join in the conversation, please unmute yourself and ask questions as you like. This is our opportunity to get educated more in practical Krishna consciousness. Yeah, we don't have many people on, on camera today. What happened? The cameras are kind of mm -hmm. like not happening. Oh, okay, that's a little better. We got yeah. we got more than thirty five people on. We got thirty one people online. Yeah, we got, we got fourteen cameras. That's all. So that's not even half. And seventeen people not on the. Um, there's. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Um, let me see. <clears throat> Bonnie is up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a question, please. Unmute yourself now. Thank you. Oh, Hare Krishna. Adhanavat Pranams. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hey, um, I have a question. Um, our devotee was telling me that they, they are chanting some other names, like in the middle of while they're chanting their japa. And this didn't sound too good, but you know, they were saying that because it's okay, because there's no hard and fast rules for for chanting. Mm -hmm. And they're chanting 
some names of it's not Krishna, but it's uh Lord Shiva. So in the middle, like like you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Shiva, Om Namo Shiva, Shiva, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so what, what kind of uh, result does does this sort of chanting? I mean, the person's not trying to be ordinary, I don't think. But what do you what do you think of this type of chanting, Maharaj? Well, Prabhupada said one of the Western diseases is to change things all the time. <laughs> Change, change, change. <laughs> but there's no need. All the the thing you can change is the quality of your chanting, and not chanting itself. Hard and fast rules uh, encompass a certain set of principles, such as no time. It's, you can chant any time. You can chant any place. You can. Um, uh, you don't have to have any qualifications for chanting. You can. So these are these are no hard and fast rules, but it doesn't mean you change the chant. They're changing the chanting. They're not chanting Krishna's name. So it's not japa. It's a combination of something else. So they think they're doing something different and benefit, but it's it's just. I'm sure Lord Shiva is not pleased. <laughs> mm. Lord Shiva wants us to chant Krishna's name. He even mentions that. Uh, so if we're chanting his name instead of Lord Krishna's name. You think you're going to please Shiva? <laughs> you're not. <laughs> Shiva is a devotee. Thank you for your expert result thank you oh. bonnie yeah tell them they're just creating some disturbance in the process of chanting and there's no benefit in that and they're depriving them themselves of getting the mercy of the holy name <laughs> All right, Krishna. okay thank you thank you, thank you very much Maharaj. Please unmute yourself. You're next. Thank you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada is to you. Maharaj, uh, if you talk about like three things, hearing, chanting, and kirtanam. So then are uh, these things like, uh, uh, are these three things very important in the nine process? And if you do these things focusly, the remaining stages will be fulfilled automatically. You mentioned two things by saying hearing, chanting, and kirtanam. Kirtanam is chanting. <laughs> hearing is shravanam, chanting is kirtanam. That's only two. <laughs> oh. Kirtanam, uh, japa, and and kirtan is all in the word in the in the category of kirtan or chanting. So the question is, if you do these things, what will happen? The other process, uh, like uh, path sevanam or uh, Vishnu smaran or sakyam dasyam, automatically will fulfill. It, whatever you emphasize. You become proficient at it. If you emphasize hearing, like Maharaj Pariksit, he, he emphasized hearing. He became perfect through that. So Gadev Goswami emphasized chanting. Uh, Hanumana emphasized carrying out uh, and becoming a servant. Kur emphasized offering prayers. Ritu Maharaj emphasized um um, what is it? Uh, Peter Maharaj uh, emphasize, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, worship, archanam. So, whatever one you emphasize, you can develop that and become perfect at it. But all of them have to be accompanied by hearing and chanting. 
Shravanam Kirtanam has to go with Smarnam, Bandanam, Padasevanam, Archanam, uh, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam, all of the night. So we perform all of these other processes through different services that we do. But there are those who emphasize one or more of these processes along with chanting, and then they become perfect at that. So you can focus on one of them, or you can focus on all of them. The so Lord Chaitanya emphasized chanting as the means for self-realization in this age. Thank you very, very much. For Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Veronica, I see you unmuted yourself. Did you want to contribute, ask a question? You're on mute. Okay, if not, that's all right. Um, but I ask you a couple of um, questions on the chat now. Um, one's from Dhiraj Chaudhary, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I'll read the question as it is. I'm not sure I understand how you put it. Please accept my humble obeisance as all close to the Prabhupada. Nishchat, that is firm determination. If we continue our sadhana and morning program regularly so we can advance firmly, this is how he wrote it. I don't know. Maybe you understand it, but he's saying Nishchat, firm determination. If we continue our sudden and morning program regularly, so we can achieve uh, or we can advance firmly. Yeah. Mm. Sadhana is the basis. Mm -hmm. Mm. Hearing and chanting morning program is sadhana. Sadhana leads to to uh, enthusiasm to engage in service, and it also gives you realization of Krishna through the process of sadhana itself. Mm -hmm. Sadhana is, is the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your determination will increase as you build the quality of your sadhana more and more. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, for there, sure. Mm -hmm. There is a second question. I don't know the person who just says, the website is iPhone, so I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, back to Nilenia. Okay, all right, so that's who. Hare right, Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shiva Prabhupada. Can expressing gratitude help us find joy in devotional service? What is the best way to express gratitude when we feel stuck or overwhelmed? Thank you, back to Nilenia. Um, yeah, my dear Lord, you've given me the association of so many wonderful devotees. And by that association, I can become Krishna conscious. So please let me take advantage of that association. Imagine if there was no association, what would you do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we should, we should appreciate the devotees' association. We should appreciate what Srila Prabhupada did in order to uh, become, to present Krishna conscious to the Western world. That gratitude is bhakti also. Gratitude is bhakti. Mm. Yeah. But gratitude is not idle. It inspires one to act. <laughs> If someone does something for you and you're grateful for it, you want to reciprocate by doing something in, in return. Okay. Thank you very much. Do what is you have other questions, realizations do you want to you know, share or ask? Please do so now. You can unmute yourself. Sri Devi Mataji, please go on. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Parikshit Prabhu. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I apologize. I thought it was the Bhakti Sangha group and that group begins at 4.50. So I joined 20 minutes late. I'm sorry about that, but I was reading the purport and I have a question about the very last few lines in the purport where it is said, 
uh, a moment's association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home back to Godhead. So this is so potent, just a moment's association with a pure devotee. But yet we see that devotees who have had association of Srila Prabhupada and other pure devotees, they've been around 20, 30, 35, 40 years, and still same old anartha, same old behaviors continue. Does it mean that they need many lifetimes or we are going to also take many lifetimes, but it's guaranteed? Is that what it means? Prabhupada said you can become Krishna conscious in one moment or you can you, you, you cannot become Krishna conscious in a million years. <laughs> if you don't know how to execute the process, if you stay attached to material desires, if you commit offenses while you're performing devotional activities, these things will block your progress in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Sanatana Goswami gives us the formula, learn what to do and how to do it, and learn what to avoid. If you don't know what to avoid, you will, you will be, it's like, it's called Hasti Snan. The elephant takes a bath into the river, gets nice and clean, and when he gets back on the land, he just picks up some dust with his trunk and he throws it all over his body. What's the use of his bat bathing? No, no use. So, yeah. If we don't learn or know how to avoid those things which take away from our, our Krishna consciousness, and then we will be spinning our wheels. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're chanting, we're doing so many things, but there's no progress because either we're committing offenses or we are still looking towards the material energy for some satisfaction, some happiness. We're still plugged into that material energy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very we, have to, we have to come to the point of saying that this there's no happiness in this material world, and I'm not going to try to be happy by, by my material activities. I may have to perform material activities in order to uh, keep body and soul together, but these are not the source of happiness. I do them because they're, re they're required. That's all. I'm not looking for happiness in the material realm. It's not there. No, for you, if you look for it, you won't find it. <laughs> but because Maya is strong, we believe, oh, yes, if I just get this situation, if I just go here, if I just do this, then I'll be happy. Mm. And then we were still, you know, we're trying to we're trying to become Krishna conscious, but we're still got one foot in the material world trying to eke out some kind of happiness there. Mm. Hey. Um Viku Prabhu, you next, please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Maharaj. Please accept our Dandvat Pranams and humble obeisances. I'd like to share a realization which I feel with the age. Uh, I do realize the importance of spiritual development and like you said earlier, to accelerate it. Because with each sunset, sunrise, my life shortens. I don't know what's ahead. And uh, I'm determined to go deeper into sadhana and to try and make up for what has been lost ground. So that was something I wanted to just mention. And I have a question regarding this uh, subject. Where earlier 
there is a mention about charity and charity to a genuine Brahmin. Of course, I find that it's rare to find an authentic Brahman. So charity goes to societies like ISKCON or say a worthy uh, person who needs health uh, related issue or to uh, Gaushala, for example. But it's, it's not easy to find an authentic Brahman, I think. Uh, and how do you how do you kind of look for or to realize who is an authentic Brahman? We have to know what an authentic Brahman is <laughs> before you can find it. <laughs> if you don't know what gold looks like and you try to find gold, then you might find a yellow rock and think it's gold. Or you might find gold and think it's not gold. You have to know what is the characteristics of an authentic Brahman. That's required. But the, the devotees we meet, to me, they matter. And, and these devotees are as good as authentic Brahmins. Can yes. we look at it that way? Wow. Well, they're, they're following the process of Brahminical development. They're living Brahminical lives. They're speaking the glories of the Lord, which is a quality of the Brahmanas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Patan, patan, yajan, yajan, dana, pratigraha. The six characteristics of a Brahman. Knows the scriptures, teaches the scriptures. Worships the deity of the Lord, teaches worship of the deity of the Lord, gives in charity, and receives charitable gifts. These are the six activities of a Brahmana. And then the qualifications of the Brahman, such as, you know, peacefulness, simplicity, tolerance, uh, undisturbed in happiness and distress. If you don't associate with people, you can't, you have to take association and then you will be able to see who is actually a Brahmin. The association has to be there. So Prabhupada has quoted, created a lot of Brahmins and those Brahmins are spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, in my mind, I was just confused with the the four uh, ashram uh, varnas, Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra. But I realize now that the qualities possessed by, or Brahminical qualities, or Brahmin qualities are possessed by many devotees, and if we recognize them, and that to me, he or she is a Brahmin. Yeah, but Brahmins are secondary to Vaishnavas. Those who are Vaishnavas are are are, yeah, are, are in a higher state of. They may there might be those who are, have Brahminical qualities than their Vaishnavas, but Vaishnavas, even if they're doing services that are not Brahminical, because they're Vaishnavas, they're better than an ordinary Brahmana. As Narada Muni says, the Brahm. Uh, you know, a Brahmana can't even save himself if he's not learned in the scriptures. And uh, a Vaishnava, no matter what position he is in, so in the society, if he's engaged in devotional service, he can save the whole world. <laughs> so, we have devotees who do Brahminic services. We have devotees who do Service that are in the in the in the varna of Kshatriya. We have devotees who do services by taking care of cows and growing agriculture. They're vicious, but still they're better than an ordinary brahmana because the devotional service is above 
the three modes of material nature, where Brahminical qualifications are in the mode of goodness only. Yes, that's very helpful, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Wonderful explanation. And Sriya, we will unmute yourself now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I wanted to piggyback on uh, Sri Devi's question, which is a very powerful question, actually. That uh, Maharaj, we we see situations, you know, where we uh, we 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 uh, what's the word? We yearn or we look forward to pure devotees association. You know, when we have sitting sannyasis, proper disciples coming, and we just drop everything and we want to go hear them. We want to spend two, three days with them. We want to serve them. But at the same time, we are making offenses. But at the same time, Marsh, like you said, if we want to know how to avoid it, then we have to ask. But Marsh, what if it comes to, to the situation where we don't even know that we're making an, an offense, but it just gets worse and worse and worse, and we don't want to hear what wrong we have done? Then what, Maharaj? What happens well, Lord Chaitanya is giving the formula how to avoid offenses. See, says, so practice these qualities, and you won't commit offenses. Tolerance, humility, respect for others. These are important because you can't chant the holy name, actually, unless you develop, you're cultivating these qualities at the same time. You have to practice that. That's that's fundamental to the character of a devotee. And then it's unlikely you'll commit offense. And if, if you do, it's not so serious because it is just maybe due to some circumstance. But if we don't practice these qualities, if we if we think we're learned, if we get arrogant, or we uh, uh, become argumentative, and then uh, and it's easy to commit offenses. Mm. Mark, so I think the, uh, the challenge nowadays is the, you know, is tolerance. Because, um, like you mentioned earlier, because we are still attached to how we want to do, when we want to do, we are still attached to how we want to do things and what we think is right for us. So, Marge, how can we actually, you know, develop this this quality of tolerance, even if it's not what we like? Well, if it's for a higher, obviously you're indicating it's for a higher purpose. So, yes, Marge. Like, yeah, and so I put aside what I like or well, what I want to do for serving the devotees and serving the Lord. So I go to a higher level. Mm -hmm. I may want to do this. I may, you know, I might have some service at the temple, but I think, oh, my, my family life is more important. Therefore, I won't come to the temple and do any service because everybody, you know, the service is there. It'll get done. But my family, I have to do my family. Yeah, so... We, we sacrifice our spiritual growth for some mundane activity. But if we serve Krishna, Krishna will teach us how to maintain our family, how to take care of our occupation. He will give us all the, all the knowledge we have, but if we, we substitute material activities for spiritual activities, then we lose both. Because <laughs> material activities are ephemeral and are finished in time. But we put so much emphasis on our material life, and therefore, when it comes to making a sacrifice, we think, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> it's just material attachments, that's all. That was very powerful, Marge. Thank you so much. Mm. Especially the part where you said we lose both. It was like a hard slap on the face, Marge. <laughs> no, it's true. 
what do you gain in material activities? All you do is gain the activity to perform it. That's why you don't gain anything. <laughs> Spiritual activities are are money in the bank. They they're never lost. Material activities are they come and go, and they're subject to the time element. <laughs> Because we because we want to live gorgeously or have a nice material arrangement, we fail to simplify our basic needs. That's why I'm pushing, and Prabhupada was pushing, and we're all pushing, go back to a more simplified lifestyle so we'll have more time for Krishna consciousness. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much, Marge. Thank you. What is any other questions? What is that verse in the uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam? Eleventh um, chapter, eleventh canto, fifth chapter, verse number forty-one, eleven five forty-one. Said, pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, eleven five forty one. Shimon. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it in the background and then share. Yeah. Devarshi putatma nirnam pratring nam na kinkano rajana chari charajam sarvatma yam sharanam saranam tato mukundan gri na sevayaiva. Devarshi is the first word. Okay. I'm at the text now. Text 41. 11, 5, 41. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, back to this. And share. Let. All right. So it should come up now. Devarshi putatma nirnam putring nam na kinkaro nayam rani charanjam Sarvatmanasya saranam saranyam gato mukunda pratiritya kartum. Someone read. O king, one who has given up all material duties and has taken full shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, who offers shelter to all, is not indebted to the demigods, great sages, ordinary living beings, relatives, friends, mankind, or even one's forefathers who have passed away. Since all such classes of living beings are, are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, one who has surrendered to the Lord's service has no need to serve such persons separately. Gets right to the point. Yeah. <laughs> <It's real. laughs> all of these uh, material things are part and parcel of the external energy. Mm. Okay. Well, it's it's an interesting purport if you want to explore it. But absolutely. Okay. That's a powerful purport. Yeah. Thank you, Martel. Eleven five forty one. Thank you for yeah. for sharing that, Marge. Wow. I I can read part of the purport if you don't mind. Okay. Purport by Sita Prabhupada. One who is not fully surrendered to the devotional service of the Lord undoubtedly has many material duties to perform. Every ordinary conditioned soul is a recipient of innumerable benefits given by the demigods who provide sun and moonshine, rain, wind, food, and ultimately one's own material body. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated, Stena eva sa, one who does not reciprocate with the demigods by offering them sacrifice is stena or a thief. Similarly, other living entities such as cows are providing us with innumerable delicious and nutritious foodstuffs. When we wake up in the morning, our mind is refreshed by the sweet singing of birds. And on a hot day, we enjoy the cool shade and breeze of the forest trees. We are accepting service from innumerable living entities and we are obligated to repay them. Apta means one's own family members, to whom one is certainly obligated according to normal morality 
and Rinam means human society. Until one becomes the devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is certainly a product of his society. We receive mundane education, culture, tradition, and protection from the society in which we live. And thus, we owe a great debt to society. Of course, our debt to society is not simply to the present order, but to all of our forefathers and ancestors who carefully preserved moral and social customs so that we, their descendants, could live peacefully. Therefore, the word Pritinam, or forefathers, indicates our death to previous generations. Should I go on, Marge? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, in fact, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. In fact, the members of the Krishna Consciousness Society are sometimes criticized by materialistic persons for giving too much attention to Krishna rather than working to fulfill all of the above mentioned obligations. In reply to this, the Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 31, Text 14, states, Yatha Thara Mula Nisi Chanena Tripyanti Tat Skanda Bujopashaka. If one waters the root of a tree, automatically all of the branches, twigs, leaves, etc., are also nourished. There is no need for, nor any effectiveness in, separately pouring water on the branches, twigs, and leaves of a tree. The water has to be placed on the root. Similarly, pranopaharach cha yatendriyanam. Food must be placed in the stomach from where it is automatically distributed to all of the limbs of the body. It is foolish to try to nourish the whole body by rubbing food separately on all the bodily limbs. <laughs> Similarly, <laughs> I saw a play. Your God brother did this, trying to feed the hand and everything separately. <laughs> Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the source of all existence. Everything is emanating from Krishna. Everything is maintained by Krishna. And at the end, everything will merge to rest in Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the Supreme Benefactor, Friend, Protector, and Well-Wisher of every living entity. And if He is satisfied, then automatically the whole world will become satisfied, just as all of the bodily limbs are strengthened and satisfied when food is duly remitted to the stomach. The example can be given that a man who is working as the personal secretary to a great king has no further obligation to petty minor kings. Undoubtedly, an ordinary person has many obligations within this material world. But according to Bhagavad Gita, Mayeva Vitan Hitan, it is actually the Supreme Lord who is giving all benedictions. For example, one receives one's body by the mercy of one's parents. However, sometimes we find that a particular man or woman may become impotent at in a given moment. Sometimes a deformed child is born. Sometimes a child is born dead. Often the sexual act fails to produce pregnancy at all. So although all parents desire a beautiful, highly qualified child, this is often not the case. Thus, it can be understood that ultimately it is by the mercy of the Supreme Lord that a man and woman are able to produce a child by the sexual act. It is by the Lord's mercy that the man's seminal injection is potent and the woman's ovum is fertile. Similarly, it is only by the mercy of the Lord that the child is born in a healthy condition and reaches physical maturity to pursue his own life. If at any stage in the evolution of a human being, the Lord's mercy is withdrawn, sudden death or crippling disease occurs. The demigods are, not, the demigods are also not independent. The word parihritya kartam, giving up other duties, indicate that one should give up any concept that the demigods are separate from Krishna. It is clearly stated in Vedic literature, that the demigods are different limbs of the universal body of the Supreme Lord. Further, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita that the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart and that he only is giving intelligence and memory. Thus, our forefathers who 
carefully preserved cultural traditions were acting with the intelligence provided by the Supreme Lord. They certainly were not acting in their own independent intelligence. No one can be intelligent without a brain, and it is only by Krishna's mercy that we receive a human brain. Therefore, if we carefully analyze all of our multifarious obligations toward different classes of living entities, we shall find that in each and every case, it is ultimately by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead that we have received a particular benediction in life. So although an ordinary person must methodically fulfill all of his various obligations by executing different types of sacrifices and charitable activities, for the satisfaction of those who have benefited him, one who is directly serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, at once fulfills all such obligations because all benedictions ultimately have come from the Lord through the agency of family, forefathers, demigods, etc. The example may be given that sometimes a state government may distribute benefits originally provided by the federal government. So one who becomes the personal secretary or minister to the chief executive of the federal government has no further obligation to the less important representatives of the state government. Therefore, read the, the state... Yeah, just read, read the translation to the next verse. Okay. Therefore, it is stated in the Srimad Bhavatam, as long as one is not satiated by fruitive activity, and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by hearing and chanting about the Supreme Lord, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions. The conclusion is that one who has fully surrendered to the devotional service of a Supreme Lord is a first-class human being. People in general are only eager to receive benedictions from demigods, family members, and society, because such benedictions are conducive to material sense gratification. Less intelligent persons consider such material progress to be the only goal of life and thus cannot appreciate the exalted position of pure devotional service to the Lord. Bhakti yoga, or pure devotional service, is meant to directly please the senses of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Envious materialistic persons propose various arguments to deny that the Supreme Lord even has transcendental senses. The devotees, however, do not waste time doubting the inconceivable beauty, strength, wealth, and geniality of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but directly please the Lord's senses through loving service and thus receive the supreme benediction of going home, going back home, back to Godhead. The devotees return to the Lord's abode where life is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. No demigod, family member, or forefather can give one an eternal life of bliss and knowledge. However, if one foolishly neglects the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and instead accepts the temporary material body to be everything, then one must certainly perform elaborate sacrifices, austerity, and charity, and fulfill all of the obligations mentioned above. Otherwise, one becomes completely sinful and condemned, even from the material point of view. Hare Krishna. Mm. <laughs> Quite an extensive express explanation. Okay. Hare Krishna. Okay. Well, the conclusion is uh, surrender to Krishna. <laughs> so, <laughs> Don't go anywhere else. <laughs> Okay. So any last questions? If not, then thank you, Maharaj, very much for this lecture. And I'd like to ask, do you want to end with the uh, round of chanting, Jaffa? Um, we're running a little tight on time, so okay. All right. I'll no have problem. to pass. But you can, uh, you can inspire the devotees to do. Maybe someone there can uh, lead the chanting and uh, to continue. And it doesn't require me to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, then, for coming on to have to grace us with such wisdom. And Krishna consciousness is always wonderful to hear. Hare Krishna. So much advice today. So, yeah, we will chant. Those who want to stay on can stay on. Those who want to go can definitely go. I'll stay on and, and chant.
पंच कपत रूप कृपा सुनिधे एव चीतालम फावने